Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the game I promised you yesterday. So Magnus Carlsen, Chess Tour Finals and we have day four of the semi-finals between Ding Liren who's gonna play in this game as white and Magnus Carlsen who's gonna play as black. This is the third game in this configuration I'm, I'm showing you um, and in the last video I show you the beautiful game, the best game of this tournament so far where Ding Liren actually crushed Magnus Carlsen in King's Indian defense. A very beautiful game. If you haven't seen that, I recommend that a really, really great game. Uh, and now we are in the blitz section, so uh, it's a it's a draw and it's a last game in the blitz section. So both players have five minutes, three seconds incrementation. I adjusted also the the rankings of the players, so these are blitz rankings. And, uh, and yeah, without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Um, D4 by Ding Liren. So uh, we have a very similar approach. Knight F6, C4, uh, and now E6. So Magnus Carlsen doesn't go for King's Indian. He said, okay, enough. Uh, I know you, you are good in the King's Indian. Let's go for uh, something more traditional. And we have G3. Ding Liren uh, usually goes for Catalan. And even against uh, King's Indian, he also played G3 with the bishop, with the early fianchetto. We have d5, bishop on g2, bishop on b4 with check, uh, and now bishop d2. And bishop goes back to e7. This maneuver is to misplace the um, the bishop. This bishop is slightly, you know, on the worst square. d2 is not the best square for that bishop. However, of course, it's the part of the theory, so uh, nothing unusual here. Uh, we have knight f3. We have castle by Magnus Carlsen, castle, uh, and now c6. So Magnus creates very uh, typical for him a uh, solid structure, and uh, we're gonna continue from here. We have queen c2, b6 by Magnus Carlsen, and now knight e5. Very beautiful outpost, as the knight is not on d7 yet. And now bishop b7 by Magnus Carlsen. C takes on d5, C takes on d5, and now rook c1, preparing queen c7. Uh, and this is still part of the theory, knight f to d7. Uh, because this knight would love to go to c6. This is the square for the for the knight in this opening. For now, it's quite difficult. Uh, and we have a couple of games in the database where queen c7 is played. Uh, and it's quite tricky, because um, the rook actually can come to c7. So uh, usually what white play is bishop a6 with the attack on e4. Uh, and here uh, knight d7 is probably the best reaction and play e4. Um, and after let's say knight f6, then e5 and this knight has to retreat. Uh, and the position of white is pretty good and pretty solid. However, Ding Liren uh, played knight d3. So he retreated with the knight and now he doesn't control c6 anymore. So Magnus jumps there immediately and now knight on c6 is a, is a really great knight because this knight now can jump to, to a5, then c4, uh, and this is really great outpost. And whenever b3 is played, this knight also can jump to, to d6 and from there control e4. Uh, so it's not easy to, to play e4 in the future for, for white. For now, Ding Liren play e3. Uh, we have rook c8 and now knight c3. Developing move, knight a5 as planned. And now queen d1. Uh, knight c4 and now bishop e1. Avoiding to exchange the pair of bishop. Uh, and now Magnus doesn't wait for any b3 or anything like that. And play a knight to d6. So from there, he controls e4. We have a4 by by Ding Liren, so he attacks on the on the queen side, and now we have a5 blocking, a knight b5, and this is pretty tricky move because now Magnus Carlsen started to think really badly, uh, and uh, once uh, he decided what to play, he was already uh, with two minutes on his clock. This is the blitz, just a reminder, and Ding Liren still has the four minutes on the clock. So uh, take the knight on, don't take the knight. This pawn actually on b5 would be very, very annoying, controlling the squares and limit, limiting the options of the, of the black pieces. So uh, Magnus decided for exchanging the rooks, rook c1, rook c1, and now queen b8. 
So his plan is to draw the game. He gonna, you know, bring the rook, exchange the rooks. And, uh, and yeah, it's gonna be very, very difficult for Ding actually to do anything. There are no complications here. And here Ding Liren uh, decided to spice up the things and played b4. There is a problem with this move because now uh, c4 is quite is quite weak. Uh, of course, the pawn cannot go back to, to control c4. Uh, and Magnus immediately jumps to c4. A very nice outpost for the knight. We have b takes on a5, b takes on a5 and e4. And here Magnus answer quite fast, knight d to b6. And now Ding Liren start to also think. Uh, and he burned his time as well to two minutes. So uh, both of the players has two minutes on the clock. But Ding came with uh, quite forced variation. E takes on d5, bishop takes on d5, bishop takes on d5, e takes on d5, and now knight e5. And what to play as black? Um, the point is that this knight can jump to c6, and this is pretty nice fork. It's actually family fork, so uh, white threatens to to win um, the pawn because the pawn is attacked twice, uh, and black has to react somehow. Uh, the best moves in this position is actually rook c1, just you know to control c6, or just move the bishop. So now the fork, if the fork happens, then the queen can defend the, the pawn. So that is the idea here. However, Magnus went for queen b7, and this is quite serious mistake. So uh, I think it's time to enjoy a chess a bit. You can pause the video and um, and enjoy the finding the winning continuation uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So it's it's winning continuation. Actually, it means uh, white gonna win the material. It's uh, it's a pretty nice uh, continuation, and there are two ways to to achieve that. First is um, taking the knight. So after knight c4, knight c4. Still, we are going for this pawn, uh, and the idea is that the rook can come to c7 and win the bishop. Okay, so this is the first idea. However, this is for amateurs. It's like very, very visible. Um, Ding Liren goes for more advanced version. Bishop a5 immediately. And now black has to decide what to do because the threat is, you know, to take the, the knight. And if knight is taken with the with the queen, then of course the knight can fork the queen and the rook. So that is the first problem. And if knight takes um, the bishop, then the rook of course jump to c7, wins back the material. White gonna be with the very strong passed pawn up. So uh, Magnus Carlsen could go also for something like knight on e5, uh, but still rook c7 is on the board. And after, let's say, queen a6, uh, trying to still, you know, defend the, the the knight and attack the bishop, there is still rook a7 uh, solving all white's problems. And after moving queen c8, um, then this knight is under attack, this knight is under attack, so uh, white gonna take the bishop. And after knight e to c4, then bishop b4, and again, white gonna have this pawn. So uh, that was option for Magnus Carlsen, but he thinks, okay, this pawn is a very, very, dangerous and it's more dangerous than um, than even giving up the exchange so uh, Magnus went for Bishop g5 attacking the rook uh, and of course we have now Bishop b6 or Bishop c1 and now Bishop c5 with the attack on the rook so um, Ding Liren gonna win the material and now Magnus decide um, how to how to do Bishop g5 was possible, however, uh, white gonna win the exchange here and still one extra pawn, a very dangerous, so Magnus play rook a8. And now Magnus has one minute on his clock and Ding Liren still has two minutes. So Ding actually blitzed all these moves. Uh, we have knight c4 now, d takes on c4 and now queen c1. Uh, rook a4 by Magnus Carlsen and now knight c3. So this passed pawn is, is blocked, really, really nice. The rook on a4 is also un under attack, so Magnus moved that rook. And now here is the critical moment of the game, just another critical moment. And uh, Ding Liren went for h4. And h4, believe me or not, is a fatal mistake by Ding Liren. So big drama. Uh, Ding Liren already has a winning position. However, he played h4. And now the point is how to exploit that. So again, 
Uh, try to pause the video and enjoy finding the winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea one more time. Ready? So first uh, I will show you how to continue the game and uh, if, you, if you didn't find the continuation then probably after that move uh, you, you will understand what is going on. Bishop a3, this was a must to play by Ding Liren and now the point is if Queen a8 which we are looking for then this bishop can retreat to b2 uh, and control a1 and everything is fine. However after h4 Magnus went for queen a8 and this is the move we are looking for if you found it congratulations really strong move and look at this rook gonna come to a1 and there is also checkmate on h1 so it's a uh, it's a pretty serious stuff uh, and now Dingley and start to think how to uh, how to save that game however it's not really possible but both players are down to one minute, so uh, you know the, the the game is still very dynamic, very complicated. In completely dry position, Ding Liren found the continuation, and he just relaxed a bit, okay? And uh, and now you know it can become the festival of blunders, and the person who gonna make the the next to the last blunder, you know, gonna win the game. So <laughs> Queen B2 was played by Ding Liren. He could go also for King H two probably a slightly better because after rook a1 he, he had the move knight b1 uh, and after let's say queen b7 attacking the the knight queen c4 giving up the knight and then continue uh from here uh, let's say queen d5 defending h1 and also threatens the, the checkmate of course it's much better for for black but White actually can try to set up some kind of fortress uh, with this bishop and the um, and the pawn. It's maybe it's possible, maybe not. I'm not really sure. Uh, but Magnus is very experienced player, so he probably would find a way. You know how to how to continue. Dingley then prefer something else. Queen b2 uh, and after rook a1, uh, knight b1. Uh, but now we have c3, so this is an uh, issue, uh, queen b3, and now h6, making, you know, the breathing space for the king, uh, as white doesn't have any active moves here. Uh, ending Liren, you know, just push the pawn, so d5. Also blocking this diagonal as the as the pawn is defended. Uh, but now Magnus has queen c8. And queen c8 is quite tricky, attacking the, the bishop and also the rook still attacking the knight. Uh, and it's not so easy to defend. If you move the queen, then of course the, the pawn gonna march. If you move the bishop somewhere, also the pawn gonna march and this pawn gonna uh win the win the queen actually it's gonna queen on b1 so uh that that's very dangerous position queen c3 is, is one option or um or king g2 if queen c3 which did ding didn't play then of course rook b1 and then king g2 and then rook b5 uh, attacking the the bishop and uh, the, the bishop has to be moved and then black for example can exchange the queens and continue with being exchanged up in the end game uh ding went for king g2 so he want to give up the bishop magnus carlsen took it uh, and from now the players play on their three seconds incrementation they have three seconds on the clock whenever they, they blitz um, the move then of course they're gonna have a slightly more time however now it's you know um, everything uh, gonna be you know messed up so knight c3 and here magnus uh, first in accuracy rook a3 was was pretty nice you know uh, skewering the queen attacking the knight so what white would have to play is knight e4 with the attack on the queen and after queen f2 king f2 rook b3 black gonna be up the exchange and that should be a uh, quite winning move okay d6 let's say king f8 and and, and that should be winning uh, but magnus play rook a8 uh, which also makes a lot of sense because he want to you know attack the the pawn uh from from this side so um ding liren want to defend it so knight e2 he consolidate the position we have rook d8 and now knight f4 there is only one problem now g5 but g5 doesn't really do anything because this knight can jump to h5 and then there is uh, the pawn is protected by the tactic so the knight can jump and pick up the the queen or the rook uh this way so uh it's it's not the problem here 
Uh, so after rook d8 and knight f4 we had a queen d4 by Magnus Carlsen and now h5 which as I said it's not really necessary. Here what Ding Liren should play is queen e3. Uh, and the point is Magnus maybe would like to exchange the queens but not on e3 because uh, now, now he would have to move the queen and the position is you know pretty much a fortress for, for black. Queen e3, if the queen is exchanged, the problem is uh, this pawn gonna have the protection. And as I said, g5 doesn't work because, because there is knight h5. And after king h8, let's say, uh, then e4 can, can protect the, the, the pawn. And um, anyhow. So uh, that was an option. However, you know, uh, just reminder, the players play on incrementation. Three seconds to find such a tactics. Uh, it's not always easy. Uh, we have h5, so Ding Liren prevents any, any g5 this way. So now he can, uh, you know, take it and pass out. Uh, and now we have queen e5 by Magnus Carlsen. Queen b6 by Ding Liren. And now rook b8, um, skewering the queen, uh, because now the rook can come to b1. And again, it can be very dangerous, especially together with the queen. There are some mating ideas here on h1. Uh, we have queen c5, but again, queen e3 asking to exchange the, the queens would be would be the best option. If rook retreats, then then simply king f3 and, and you know, Magnus would have to find a way because this is kind of fortress. It's not easy actually, you know, uh, to break through. Uh, but after rook b8, we have queen c5 by Ding Liren, small inaccuracy, and now queen e4. So uh, all of this, you know, it's still, it's, it's a problem, of course. And now it's a very interesting moment because Ding Liren uh, play on his instinct. So um, it's very difficult to make decision to play King H2. However, this was the best move in the position because there are no checkmate. How? Because after king h2, rook b1, uh, it looks like, okay, that's gonna be a checkmate. Uh, but we have queen c8 with check, king h7, and now f3. But the point is that the pawn cannot be taken, because if black decide to take the pawn, there is a tactic here, okay? And uh, white gonna win the rook and the game. So what black would have to play is something like um, rook b2 and after king h3, let's say uh, black doesn't have much choice, probably just exchange the queens and continue the, the game this way. And again, uh, white still has some chances to draw that game, especially in the blitz, uh, because this pawn can be pretty dangerous. Uh, there is no, you know, just just exchange the, the all the pawns and uh, white gonna have a draw. Uh, however, Ding Liren went for King H3. That's of course is the instinctive move, and uh, Magnus could go for for Queen H1, and uh, and after King go to G4, bring Rook to F1, and and you know uh, checkmate on F5. And uh, it's gonna be very difficult to actually uh, save the game here this way. Uh, however, he played Rook B1, and again Ding Liren um, had a last chance to play something like Queen C8, bring the Queen to this diagonal. It's very important to control f5 because now for example after king h7 queen g4 can be played and there are no moves like you know f5 uh, so this was last chance uh, to to stay in the fortress and try to defend that game uh, try to maybe push this pawn a bit and that could be very dramatic as the knight in the critical moment sometimes can deliver you know some some fork and uh, it's still a very tricky position uh, however finally ding liren just jumped to g4 and after f5 he just resigned so he missed that he has to cover the f5 square and uh, and that was his last chance to try to hold however after f5 he resigned because he can do nothing um, his king has to be moved and and then there is a, of course checkmate in one so what a game what a game and what the round for ding liren because in the game number two he created the masterpiece in the game number three he had the winning position and he messed up the the end game uh, and that was only a draw and here again he had the winning position against Magnus Carlsen 
beautifully played however you know one little inaccuracy uh became the blunder and at the end he still had the chance to to draw uh but couldn't deliver magnus carlsen was exhausted in the interview he was exhausted he he couldn't you know um talk normally um the commentator didn't ask him normal questions they were also so pity so he had the one day of break and now he's gonna join Hikaru Nakamura as you see uh, in the finals Hikaru uh, got pretty smoothly to the final Magnus Carlsen with the problems he lost the first match and in this one uh, also almost lost so it was very very tough for him but today in August 14th uh, we're gonna see the first match of the final so uh, you know stay tuned if you don't want to miss any other video Press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.